about our kind of securing our desktops a little bit, uh, specifically adding a firewall, uh, in this case, uh, UFW. Uh, tonight I'm going to walk through kind of how I set up uh, my UFW instance. Uh, UFW Uncomplicated Firewall is what it stands for. I'm going to walk you through some of the different commands that are available to you. It, this is by no means an exhaustive a list of all the commands that you'd be able to use uh, for this. Uh, but this is essentially how I would set up my desktop. I'm going to show you some additional things that I have, you know, specifically set up for uh, my server. All right, let's get into it. And like most installations for things, um, it's fairly straightforward, especially from the command line. Uh, the package we're going to be installing is UFW. I know it is called UFW on both Pac-Man and uh, apt-based uh, package managers. I can't see why it would be named any differently on things like uh, DNF or Zipper, uh, anything like that. I, would, I don't know why it would be called anything other than UFW. Uh, what well, we are on Arch, I recently switched over to Arch from uh, Debian, uh, specifically from a Debian and a BSPWM uh, installation. Now we're on Arch with KDE because I felt like changing things up, uh, but I digress. Let's just get into installing and configuring UFW. Uh, so for me, we're going to do sudo pacman dash capital S for sync UFW. And yes, I will install it. Uh, so now we have UFW installed. Uh, you can check the status of it with sudo UFW status, and it should come up with status inactive. Uh, so right now we have it installed. It's not doing anything, which that's fine because it doesn't have anything rules to do with it. It doesn't have any rules to do anything with anyway. Uh, so let's start by adding a rule. Uh, the one thing that I always add right at the very beginning is the default kind of catch all. So sudo UFW default. And I always like to do reject. Um, you can, I suppose, if you want, uh, you can have the default for any connection attempt to be allow. Uh, deny is also a an option. I'm honestly not entirely sure what the difference between deny and reject is. Uh, reject seems more forceful, so I'm just going to go with reject. So sudo ufw default reject. And the next thing that I do, uh, especially if I'm... Uh, you know, logging into this server remotely via SSHs. I enable the SSH port because if you were to enable, because uh, right now, like we, we added the default rule to reject everything. We have not enabled UFW yet. Uh, for instance, if we were to uh, be connected on this uh, server to, you know, via SSH onto this server, and we added the default reject rule, and then we were to enable this, we would be kicked out immediately because, well, we don't have any way to connect. Uh, we're not allowing SSH anymore. Uh, so I always add in uh, the SSH. So sudo UFW, and then you can do allow SSH or sudo UFW allow the port number or the port number and the protocol, which would be TCP. And even another thing you could do is sudo UFW limit the port number, the protocol, and then add a comment, which is what I do. Uh, I like to run all of my uh, SSH sessions over port 69 because lulls, uh-huh. And uh, SSH is only ever going to be over TCP. Uh, so essentially what this reads is uh, UFW, we're going to allow connections over port 69, but we're going to limit the amount of attempts that can be made within like a second or something like that. So, so it's so much, much more difficult to like uh, brute force your way in. Uh, so we're going to be limiting connections over 
uh, port 69 with protocol TCP, and then the comment is just for us to read. Uh, so it's SSH. And if we look at the status again, we still won't see anything because we haven't enabled it yet. Uh, so let's do that now. So sudo ufw enable. And you'll see as soon as you enable it, uh, it will turn on and it will create a registry or not really a registry. It'll create a service that will automatically start whenever your computer boots up, which is generally what you want. Uh, now, if we look at the status, uh, we'll see that it created both IPv4 and IPv6 rules, which is fine. Um, if you don't need the version six rule, I mean, it doesn't hurt anything to have it there. Uh, so we have a default reject. Uh, we added a rule to allow SSH connections over port 69. Uh, another thing that you might want to do, uh, specifically if this was, say, on a server, and you want you know, connections from an internal IP uh, on a different subnet, to be able to access pretty much anything they want on the uh, system. So sudo ufw allow from, and then your IP address or your range of IP addresses to um, a specific port number or really anything. So what this is doing is it's allowing um, from Anything that has the internal IP address of 192.168.42, uh, anything uh, that's on that subnet uh, to reach out to anything on this computer, which that's that's fine because if something is on that internal subnet that shouldn't be, there's probably a bigger issue than uh, your security for uh, that specifically. And we can look at the status for that again with sudo ufw status, allowing to any port as long as it's coming from this specific subnet. Uh, but let's say that we wanted to, you know, just allow connections to just a specific port, but we want to allow them for anywhere. So like HTTP perhaps. Uh, so sudo ufw allow and UFW enable has a couple named conventions that you can do. There's SSH, there's Telnet, there is HTTP, there is... Oh man, there's a few others. You could look up the man page for it. But if we just do sudo UFW allow HTTP and then check out the status of it you see that it added port 80, which is the default HTTP port. Uh, but let's say that we didn't really want to allow uh, connections over port 80, specifically on IPv6. Uh, well, we can delete that rule. Uh, it gives us an option, so sudo ufw delete. And then it actually expects there to be um, a, an index or it expects a number, a rule number. Uh, how would you find the rule number? Uh, one way to do it is to simply just count. So one, two, three, four, five. So the fifth rule is the IPv6 port 80. So delete five. Yeah, sure. And you'll see that it's gone now. Although, if you have a very large list of rules, that can be super tedious. Uh, so a nice way to do, and actually see what the rule numbers are, is sudo ufw status numbered. And that will actually provide the uh, rule number over to the left. Uh, so let's actually delete uh, the other port 80 out of here. So sudo ufw delete and rule number three. Yes. And you'll notice that the rule numbers are not actually uh, like rule IDs. They're more of an index. Uh, so we deleted three 
Uh, so instead of having one, two, and four for the rule numbers, uh, it's just one, two, and three. So it's the idea of the index of or the the index that the rule is in in the list of rules. Uh, it's one based for whatever reason because I suppose they want it to be a little complicated. Uh, and then one of the things that I need to do on my desktop is allow a, a kind of a range of ports uh, all at the same time. I use the KDE Connect app or application uh, that I'm able to connect my Android phone to my, you know, to my desktop here. And it's super nice because I can, you know, be sitting back on the couch just watching some YouTube and uh, using my phone as a mouse. Really handy. Uh, but KDE Connect has a kind of a strange, strange port list that it needs open. It's not just a single port, it's actually a series of 50 ports. Uh, specifically, it's, well, it's technically 100 ports, uh, 50 for both UDP and TCP protocols. Uh, but it is 1714 to 1764 for the port number. Uh, and that could get very, very tedious if you needed to add all of those ports one at a time. Thankfully, you don't have to do one at a time. Uh, you can you can add a, a, a range of ports. Uh, so for this, you could do sudo ufw and then allow the first port colon the, or I guess the starting port colon the ending port and then you have to provide it uh the protocol that it uses um if you're providing a range you have to use a protocol i'm not entirely sure why it just can't go for both i assume reasons uh but since we do need it for both uh, we're just gonna have to essentially enter this twice so we're going to allow port anything from port 1714 to port 1764 uh, specifically using the UDP connection. And we'll do this again, this time with the TCP connection. And if we look at our status again here, we have the UDP version and the TCP as well as the IPv6. Uh, now, sometimes when you are adding rules, uh, it will sometimes automatically you know, just apply, uh, it'll be instant. Sometimes it doesn't. I would always suggest every time that you add anything to reload the firewall. Uh, so sudo ufw reload. And that will essentially disable it and then turn it back on. Uh, but let's say that we, you know, we, we made a mistake or we have, you know, hundreds of rules that we don't want, we just kind of want to start fresh. Uh, to do that, we can essentially start from the beginning with sudo ufw reset. And it'll want you to, it'll prompt you to like, are you sure you want to do this? That you could be losing a lot of data here. Say yes, and then it's actually going to back up all of your rules. Uh, so it will back it up to uh, slash edc slash ufw, and looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like there's six different uh, rule files that will be backed up. So if you do need uh, them back, you should be able to open them up again, see what they were, reapply them. All right, and here we have generally what I set up uh, for my desktop. There's not a lot of things that I need to allow access to. Um, I'm allowing, you know, SSH or limiting the SSH port uh, over 69 and I'm allowing essentially only the KDE Connect uh, ports to be opened. Um, I have no reason to have anything open, uh, to have anything else open. Uh, perhaps if you're on a server or if you're on a server, you'll likely have a lot more specific use cases such as allowing, you know, a, a certain subnet uh, access to an application or a specific port. Uh, and you could kind of follow my 
kind of example there with the uh, allowing all the subnets to anything on your network. All right, well, that should just about do it. Uh, we installed UFW, set up a default rule set to deny or reject everything. Uh, we're adding, we added an SSH and some uh, custom application ports to be opened up. And there's really not a lot else that you need to do. Uh, this should kind of keep your, your networking fairly secure. Uh, yeah, well, I'm Sky Knight. Thank you all for hanging out with me. See ya.